So, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, uh, it's my absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Gaurav Banga. I'm the founder and CEO of Balbix. Like many folks on the call today, I also grew up in India. So it's a, it's a very, very important thing for me to be uh, in with all of you. Uh, and, you know, one, one of the things I want to talk about is before we get into cybersecurity posture and what for whatever cybersecurity posture is and what it means and why do we need automation, uh, I remember when I was growing up, there was this guy or this character called Chacha Chaudhary. And if all of you might remember, some of you, I hope you remember, uh, Chacha Chaudhary had this fantastic capability, which is that his mind was faster than a computer. And unfortunately, when it comes down to cybersecurity, Chacha Chaudhary is a little, let's say, it, it, it doesn't sit well. Cybersecurity is a little bit beyond the computer mind of uh, Chacha Chaudhary. And to understand this, to tell you the story of uh, uh, how we look at, at Balbix, how we look at cybersecurity, I'm going to give you a little bit about my background, right? This is my second cybersecurity company and my fourth uh, uh, enterprise overall. And one of the things that I've been very, very fortunate to do is sit by a lot of folks in your shoes and learn a lot from you. And this is what we learned, that over the last few years, the attack surface has exploded. And this is an abstract picture of the attack surface. And the reason why it is beyond Chacha Chaudhary's computer mind is because of, if you look at, look at what's on the right side over here, this is all of the things that make up the modern digital enterprise. This is all the software, all the firmware, applications, operating systems on all the devices that you have, all the services that you run. It could be in a data center, it could be in AWS, it could be in the pocket of an employee, it could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, right? That's all on the right side. And on the left side in this picture, we show all the different ways in bad, bad things can happen. So all the different attack vectors like you know password issues and software issues like uh, CVEs and, and misconfigurations and zero days and highly fishable users, so they're all on the left side. And every point on this picture represents one area of risk. And the z-axis is a measure of how risky things are. So red is bad, and green is good, and orange is somewhere in the middle. Now the challenge is, well, first of all, if we had this picture, it would be fantastic, right? Because then we would we could focus our energies all the work that we do in the security industry on the red areas until we got them better. And if once we got them better. So if we had this radar plot, we could we could do our work more efficiently, more effectively. We could prioritize things better. We could report on the changes. The challenge is that how do we get to this plot, right? Because if you look at, uh, if you want to ask this question, what's my risk? And if you really want to get an answer which is not qualitative, it was, it is more quantitative or data driven, then we need to solve the risk equation, likelihood times impact. This is a very popular way of looking at risk. And then in order to do this, in order to understand likelihood times impact, we have to look at these five things. Now this, these five things are one, we have to look at the severity of the issue. How important is it? So if the issue is a software vulnerability, like a CVE, we need to look at the CVSS score. If the issue is a fishable user, then we have to ask the question, how fishable? And so on, right? Now, another thing we have to look at is whether that, what is the threat of the issue, right? Whether this issue is even being exploited. So as we all know, most of the CVEs are theoretical, they'll never be, get exploited. So we have to ask whether there is an exploit for the CVE, and is it being exploited in the wild against organizations of our type or my type? And now, because if not, then I should not have to worry about it. 
We also need to look at a factor which we call exposure. And uh, the definition of exposure would be, is the software being used in such a way that the vulnerability or the weakness can actually be exploited? So my favorite example for that is, there is a CVE in Microsoft Edge. There is an exploit for it, but my browser, my default browser is Google Chrome. And therefore, there is no risk, and there is no reason for me to worry about it, or there's very little reason to, for me to worry about it. Now, we also need to bring in the impact of our security controls into the risk calculation. And the reason why we need to do that is because you know, when we are investing in things like CrowdStrike or Central One or a firewall or a VPN or two-factor authentication, we must be doing that so that these are proactive measures that we are taking so that they cancel out some of these security issues so that they can ward off these threats. So they must be doing something to reduce our risk and we need to take that into account. And then last but not least, we need to bring in the business impact because not everything not every asset in our environment is equally important. Some assets are more important than others, and some can cause you know, millions of dollars or crores of rupees of loss. Others, less much so. So if you look at this calculation, it has to be performed for all of the data points. But first, we have to enumerate the right axis. We have to enumerate the left axis, and then for every point of this enumeration, we have to do the risk calculation. And this is what makes this very, very hard because if you do the math, there's just a lot of data. If you want a real-time picture, like a radar plot for a pilot, then you will need to do this calculation, crunch a lot of data continuously in your real-time basis. And just to give you, I'll do the math for you. For our largest customers at Balbix, which are some of the uh, you know, telcos in the US, we have to analyze a petabyte of data every few hours to get this picture. And if you think about that, right, a, a lot of Indian organizations are even bigger than most international organizations in terms of people, in terms of assets, pieces of software. So petabytes of data every few hours even if you had several hundred people and you asked them to analyze a petabyte of data, it would take them several lifetimes to do that even once. So this is why we say understanding cyber risk, managing it, and it's not a human scale problem anymore. Now, if you double click into this, there are three real issues over here. One issue is that we have made all these investments. We have lots of tools. Well, many of us have lots of tools. All of these tools, so security tools, IT tools that produce a lot of data, but data does not necessarily mean you have visibility. Data just means you have data, so very few insights. Uh, the second aspect around this is we still struggle to have a good unified asset inventory. And as you know, you can't protect what you don't know about. So if our asset inventory is inaccurate, then how are we going to be able to protect? There are siloed views. Yes, you have cloud and you have non-cloud. Uh, how do you put all that together? Now, because we don't have visibility, we get into the second problem, which is that when risk arrives in the form of a new security issue, it takes us a lot of time to fix it. So the mean time to remediate risk in the fortune 500, as I see it, as from you know, based on our data, is 154 days. The mean time to mitigate risk in the Fortune 100 is about 74 days. And then the mean time to weaponize a new security issue is about 14 days today. So if you think about it, if you think of you know new issues that are arriving, we have to fix them. We are in a losing game right now. So unless your mean time to mitigate risk, your mean time to patch is less than 14 days, we are getting further and further behind. Now, the third problem is that, and this is the problem that a lot of you know, like we, cybersecurity is a complex topic. There are many technicalities involved. It requires ex years of experience to really understand it. Each member in your team is hopefully 
very experienced and technical. But when we try to describe cybersecurity outside, people don't really understand. Right, so we have to translate, and the challenge really is that there is a need to translate IT risk into business risk, and that's not so easy. We can't just say high risk, well, because somebody is high, somebody else is medium. And this is not aligned with how rest of risk management happens, which happens in money terms, rupees. So with that, I want to bring out, this is a very high level picture of the Balbix platform. Our view is that you need to, in order to solve this problem, we need to automate. So Balbix is a cybersecurity posture automation platform. And there is the thing that we are automating is the analysis of data, technical data from all your tools, as well as human input combined together. So the first layer of the Balbix, the first module in Balbix, which is foundational, is the asset inventory model, which Gartner calls a cyber asset and attack surface management, or CASM. And think of it as a real-time unified asset inventory for everything that is in your environment, including all the software. And what I mean by that is, uh, is uh, this is at the level of granularity of a software bill of materials with modules and version numbers, enterprise-wide, scales up to millions of assets. So you can ask, where do I have this module number with this version number in the environment and what application does it support? The second layer in Balbix is that of vulnerability management, and it is tightly coupled into our asset inventory layer. It is tightly integrated into our asset inventory layer. And this layer is responsible for, based on the SBOM and based on the inventory, to do vulnerability discovery and vulnerability assessment. And then the dispatch, the, the mitigation, uh, the prioritization, the verification of risk. And then the third layer is risk quantification, which translates everything into money terms. So now I'm going to show you a picture, which is quite literally the brain of a brain scan of pelvics. So this is a little bit of an eye chart, but let's walk about the log walk through this picture. On the left side, you have all the different inputs into Balbix. So these are your cybersecurity tools, your IT tools, your business tools. Some of the data inputs are structured data, which we get from APIs or you know for snapshots. Some of these are unstructured data, like pen test reports. Right. Now, on the right side of this picture, you have the risk model. This tells you where you're good, where you have good risk, where you have not so good risk. What is the reason why the risk is high? So the model is traceable. And what are the next best steps to reduce the risk? Oh, you're missing two-factor authentication there. You're missing CrowdStrike over there. You have a misconfiguration over here. You have not... There's a critical issue and you have not patched it. That's a risk model. But it's it's a little bit more than just a risk model because it maintains the plan of action and it has alerts. You can splice and dice it by different business units, business owners, down to an asset level. And then you have benchmarks and scorecards. How well am I working compared to my peer organization? How well are the different risk owners in my organization working relative to each other? Right. Now, every node in the middle is a data science model, a machine and AI model whose single purpose is to solve that one data problem. So if you're familiar with asset inventory, deduplication is a big issue, right? Because some of your tools over here are generating signals in one language. Other tools might generate signals in a different language. Now, just imagine your laptop. You get up in the morning, your laptop gets the IP address from the home network, and when you log in, your VPN server gets a signal, it logs it. Maybe your DNS server gets a signal, it logs it. Your a CrowdStrike gets a signal, it logs it. Uh, and maybe you go to an application, the application gets a signal, you log it. Your two-factor authentication gets a signal, it logs it. All of these signals have one IP address. Then you go to a coffee shop and the IP address is different. Now you go to work and you hit a few other applications. Maybe VPN is not involved anymore. So you get yet another IP address and different signals. So these all have to be deduplicated to the same asset, which is your laptop. 
So we all encounter this problem. In fact, when we hire data scientists, they keep running into this problem over and over. Deduplication is a really hard problem, and Balvik solves that. And this, that is just one of the small data science problems you have to solve. You see another problem over here right in the middle, which is called device category. We solve this problem because this is about recognizing whether a particular asset is a laptop or desktop or domain controller or S3 bucket in Amazon or something else in Azure or a Lambda, whatever it is, a Kubernetes container. So that's the device category. And in order to solve that problem, we use GPT-3, which is the same technology that ChatGPT uses. So we use specialized machine learning models for specific data science problems. Our ultimate goal is we want to deduplicate all these signals, correlate them, and then do continuous learning. So for example, the best way to calculate breach likelihood, it turns out that it is that the, the calculation that you have to do, it turns out that GPT-3, which is very good for language models, is not a good model for doing that calculation. And instead, there's a different AI paradigm called probabilistic graphical model, which is what we use over there. All right, so all of these algorithms, there's over 100 models that work together and give us this capability of processing petabytes of data every hour to go and give you a risk model, which is traceable and actionable. So let's see how we make this work. So we have, um, in this picture, we show you all the different use cases that the Balbix platform can help you with. And we have operational use cases, asset inventory, risk assessment, all the way on the right side where we have executive level and board level use cases, compliance use cases. And they're all linked together. That means Balbix's theory is that you can't really do security investment ROI until you have the data all the way down to your assets, because otherwise the data is meaningless. Similarly, we also believe that unless you are calculating your breach likelihood and your breach impact and therefore your breach risk accurately based on your how you're doing your operations, you really can't talk in a boardroom about what you will do about risk reduction. If you're proposing a plan in the boardroom and proposing a cost and trying to demonstrate the effectiveness of your program, it has to be tied back to the operational side. So our ultimate objective is to support, this is the dream that we have, this is the vision that we have, is gamification of risk management. We believe that risk management is not just the job of the security team, it's everybody's job. The security team job is to really set up risk management properly, which means that what we want to happen is that everybody who owns risk, whether they are a business unit owner or an IT owner or an individual, they get all the right information so that they can do the right information, the right tools, the right incentives, so that they can do their part of risk management. And Balbix has all these capabilities that you see on the left so that you can set this thing up. I'll give you one example, right? Uh, one of our customers, an oil company in the UK, what they did was they assigned 10% of everybody's annual bonus to three or four items in the Balbix dashboard. And I can tell you their cybersecurity posture changed within six months, it became really, really good. All right, so a few more case studies and then I'll give you the experience of Balbix. Um, this is, uh, we work at very large scale as we also work at smaller scale, mid to large size enterprise, that's our sweet spot. Uh, this is a Fortune 25 pharmaceutical company, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, when they came to us, they, they did not have a good asset inventory. They thought they had about 250, 260,000 assets. They have about 76, cybersecurity and IT, relevant cybersecurity and IT tools, including several tools that are homegrown. And you can see on the left, there are some of cloud tools, some of firewalls, some of them are EDR, XDR, endpoint software, all sorts of tools. And they wanted to get the big picture. What's the big picture look like? Where am I vulnerable? What's my risk look like? So the first thing we did for them is build a unified asset inventory. And then we they actually find out they have about 800,000 assets. 
So it's like discovering that you have kids that you need to worry about. When you, a day earlier, you thought you had those kids. They were not your kids, right? Or they were kids that didn't exist. It's 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 just very profound when you suddenly discover that you don't have 200,000 assets. You instead have 781,000 assets. And then what we do for them is we help them with vulnerability management, and we also help them demonstrate the effectiveness of their InfoSec program in money terms. And these two are tied together as two sides of the same coin. Uh, this is an operational use case. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you or many of you have struggled with Log4j. Now, because Balbix has an SBOM, uh, we are able to literally recognize where in your environment you have a module like Log4j or even a specific version of Log4j. Because if you might go back to December 2021, when Log4j came out, it was not just one issue. There were multiple issues, and it was very hard to detect because instances, modules of Log4j were not in the installer directory or in the registry. Right? You had to go inspect application by application to find all the issues. And that is exactly what any kind of a module vulnerability looks like. Spring for Shell is like that. OpenSSL, all these library vulnerabilities are like that. It's very hard to find. But once you have a full asset inventory at the SBOM level, all the software inventory, version number, dependencies, how it, the software is being used. When you've analyzed all that data, it is right there. Uh, you can look it up. Then these problems become a lot easier. And what does that mean? We were able to help uh, this telco mitigate Log4j in a few days instead of three or three plus months that it would have taken them otherwise, because that's what they used to spend. So CLQ, RBVM, and chasm all integrated into a single package. That's really what Balbix is. Here's the CRQ example. Uh, I, I, I want to dis describe some of the uh, visuals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the next few minutes trying to do a platform walkthrough so you can get a sample of what, what the Balbix experience looks like. So it's, Balbix is a very visual product. It's like a modern day product that was designed yesterday for the, for the requirements of today. And so when you log in, you will see a view like this. It is very simple, kind of like what you would expect from a modern product. This is one of the snapshots and everything can be customized. I mean, the, I'll show you some white, uh, dark mode, light mode, all of that visual customization is there. But uh, uh, all of this is being generated automatically. It means once you set it up, it takes a few hours. It takes more time to plan for the setup than it takes to actually do the setup. Uh, then you, you just literally start seeing this. Right. Now, everything, as you can see over here, everything which is uh, at the very top, you have the risk equation. It is a big snapshot of your entire enterprise. And then everything that is colored, you can click through and drill down. So if I was to click through desktop laptops, I would see a view like this. Now this view is telling me why my risk is, uh, you know, at, at red, right? Why my likelihood is 43%. Some of it is coming from unpatched software. Some of it is coming from big credentials. And I can click on various things to get next best steps. I can also drill down to go to a single asset level. Now let's look at some of the chasm capabilities, cybersecurity asset inventory, because this is the base layer, right? So as soon as you install Balbix and you run it and you it consumes data, it takes about three to five days to learn uh, for a large environment with let's say a couple of hundred thousand assets. Once after three to five days, it knows a, a lot about your environment. Right? Uh, it, it, for example, knows what your desktop laptops are and it categorizes them, bundles them nightly, produces all of these views, it knows the location. Even the notion of finding a location, if you think about it, is fairly complex, right? It's it's like, are you behind a firewall? Are you coming from home? Are you coming, are you mobile? Are, is your phone? Are you tethered to your phone? All of those things are complex. So it, it, how do we find the actual physical location? That itself is a data science problem, right? 
Uh, I can go down to asset inventory details, and you can actually go down to knowing exactly what version or what software or what operating system exists on what assets. And this information could be anywhere. Some of this information is coming from a firewall. Some of it is coming from a CMDB. Some of it is coming from CloudSight. Some of it is coming from Qualys. Some of it is replicated. Some of it is incorrect in one tool and correct in another tool. And it is Balvix's job is to make sense of all that data and put it together for you. Now, we are, we are very used to search, like Google spoiled us. So in Balvix, you can do very simple searches like this, right? You don't have to run a scan. You just say unpatch assets. If you're just interested in Windows, you say unpatch Windows servers. If you're looking at a particular CV, you can just type that. Or you can do very detailed filtered searches where you can be very, very specific in what you're looking for. And what, what Balvix will return to you is only those assets or those applications or those users that match this query. And a lot of things that we struggle, like, you know, where are CISA known exploits? As CISA KEV is a big deal for us, right? In the US at least. Where do we have exploit kits available for a particular CV? What are ransomware related, right? That stuff, when you kind of bring it all together, that's all available as macros that you can very quickly use, filter, and bring it in front of you. So within seconds, you can look at all this pre-analyzed data and ask, get your questions answered. Now, when we get into vulnerability management, which is kind of like after chasm, that's like the second layer of Balbix. Uh, Balbix is, you know, finding out where all the CVs are. If you have a scanner, we can take that data. If you don't have a scanner, you can also get that data from just examining the software issues. Because remember, we are connected into over 75 most important vendors and all of the products that they build and what version numbers, what security loopholes have been found, all the government data sources, dozens of threat providers, all of that information is constantly being updated into the Balbix train. So when we look at your asset inventory, we know exactly where the vulnerable versions of your assets are. We don't have to scan, we know. So it's a tagging exercise for us. It's an inferencing exercise for us, it's like a gigantic matrix multiply. So that means that when a past Tuesday comes out, that information is available. And we have arrangements obviously with Microsoft, we get that information a little bit ahead of time. And then immediately we know without having to scan exactly what is vulnerable. Now if Adobe is also releasing vulnerabilities and Oracle is also releasing vulnerabilities, you don't have to worry about it because Balbix is constantly updating this information. Now we support two types of scenarios over here, because as you know, in patching uh, in vulnerability management, there are the wartime scenarios when there is a particular zero day that has to be patched on a select number of high risk, high risk assets or high exposure asset, and different people use different language. The right word to use is high risk asset immediately, right? And then there is peacetime scenarios, weekly, monthly, patching, where you're not looking at patching a single CVE, but you can look at what you're looking at is finding the most optimal patch, the best superseding patch. So you can do the maximum number of, well, you can fix the maximum number of security issues, vulnerabilities in the minimum amount of work, right? So these are the two different uh, scenarios over here, and Balbic supports both peacetime vulnerability management as well as wartime vulnerability management. And uh, you know, somebody asked this question, you know, how do we calculate risk? And I just goes back to my very first slide. For every vulnerability instance, this is the calculation that Balbix is trying to do. We're trying to bring in information about the vulnerability itself, about the exposure, about the business impact, about the threat level, as well as about the negating impact of your security controls. So what essentially happens is Balbix maps every vulnerability instance using the MITRE attack framework to TTPs. And then we take every control and we map it to effectiveness against those TTPs. So then the data science problem that we solve is we do these gigantic matrix multiplies 
and it's not done as a matrix multiply. It's a probabilistic matrix multiply. It is done by a probabilistic graphical model, and you get this answer. And all the supporting data that you need is there. So somebody asked, is asking a question. Yes, this is a SaaS platform. Uh, it is the, the, it will connect into your existing data sources. If you have behind the firewall data sources, uh, we can we can connect those as well. It's hosted in because of data sovereignty requirements. We have many data centers, including one in Mumbai. So if you are a customer in India, all the data stays within India. But it is a SaaS platform. Uh, now we are also tightly integrated on the ticketing side and on the dispatch side with your, your ticketing system. And so you can just set things up so that as vulnerabilities are discovered and they're set up, they're put in the appropriate group, and then the dispatch for mitigation all automatically. So the whole idea is how do I maxim maximally automate the identification, the evaluation, the prioritization, the dispatch, the mitigation, the verification of vulnerabilities. And can I do that in an hour instead of 154 days? Can I do that within a day? So the, for the typical Balvis customer, you're able to do all of this very, very quickly. Now, as you know, this is not just about uh, software operating systems. It's really about the application. So Balvix uniquely does this one thing. We discover not just your assets, we also discover your applications. And we create a map from your applications to your infrastructure. That means that when you look at Balvix, you can look at an application-centric view. You can go look at all the applications, and then you go down, and it will also tell you what the relevant infrastructure, which it might be vulnerable or not. Or you can look from the asset infrastructure up, and you can say, is this, uh, where is this piece of infrastructure? What applications is it supporting? And get a holistic risk view, either from applications down or from infrastructure up. Now, part of what we do is, and because this is a data science platform, ultimately we support all this, the most important thing about the human brain, which is analytics and metrics, the ability to think, the ability to make decisions based on data. So you will very easily be able to create a widget like this. It takes literally four seconds in Balbix to create any sort of a widget where you're trying to splice and dice your network in different ways, compare, just like a typical analytics platform, except because all the data that you need to do these analytics is already there. It is being continuously analyzed. So you all of these metrics that you ha might have to report on are the ones that you want to see so that you can make the right investment decision, whether you can see whether you're doing OK, whether you're behind what you're ahead. If one of your risk owners is, is doing OK, the other one is not. One of your sites is doing OK, one of the other one is not. All those comparative metrics, whether you decide it's MTTR or MOVA, all of that is at your fingertips. Now, when you kind of look at uh, to make this kind of a platform work, uh, our food is data. And so one of the things that we have spent a lot of time on is building a massive connector library. But we, so we have lots of connections. You know, if you have a cybersecurity tool, IT tool, business tool, chances are that we already support it. But there is one very special thing about Balbix, and that is, and I'm going to go back to the foundation of the platform is machine learning, AI, NLP. So what we do is we use, just like you and I would sit down and look at a schema or an API and understand it, uh, truly understand it, and then write down code to build a connector for it, mapping fields to fields and to uh, mapping between one schema and another schema. Palbix can do all of that automatically. So when we have a new data source or a proprietary data source, we quite literally can generate a connector. Now, because of that, and because of a data science nature, Palbix makes it very easy for you to find out the gaps in your telemetry. So this is an example of a picture where no single tool is universally deployed, but across the tools, you have broad coverage, 
and Balbix will tell you exactly where you have no coverage or where you have big coverage or less coverage. Every calculation in Balbix produces two metrics, coverage and confidence. And if there is not enough data to make a call, just like human beings are smart about it, you know, if I don't know, I will say I don't know, or I should say I don't know. A Balbix also does that. If the data is not there, it's not that we're going to pretend that we know the answer. We will just say no. Now, one, one, one question somebody is asking is, what kind of issues we look at? We look at all sorts of issues, anything that's a security issue, not just software vulnerabilities, not just patching, misconfigurations, for example, password issues as another example. Now, one of the things that people have spent a lot of time and people in you know, CISOs and the security teams, compliance teams have to spend a lot of time is a topic which is not cybersecurity, but is cybersecurity. It, it is very close to cybersecurity, but not. And this can be, for example, the NIST 800.53, uh, which is the basis of many international regulations. Uh, the, uh, you know, SEBI regulation, RBI regulation, they're all based on these international ISO 27001, PCI DSS. All of these are compliance frameworks. These are checklists that we have to go through. And Balbis can automate a lot of that. So what we do is we map all of these compliance modules into a common compliance framework. And not everything is automatable, but we have with our NLP capabilities and our connectors, we have been able to automate a lot of that. And every year we increase the degree of automation. So what this allows you to do is and now I've switched over to the color. Now these are also Balbix screenshots, but they are screenshots in white mode. So you can see over here is a kind of a dashboard. If there's somebody is trying to say how they work against uh, the NIST cybersecurity framework, uh, this, is, this is an example of how you would do that. And this is a detailed report. All right, so how does this all come together for reporting purposes, for risk quantification purposes? So here is an example of another dashboard that built from the same data, but this time the dashboard is appropriate for a senior executive level or a board level, right? Where there is no mumbo jumbo about security things like CVEs and exploits and assets and uh, all of that sort of gone away. Instead, you're looking at risk by business unit and by type. These are the kind of things that your board would create uh, or your CFO would care about. And they, we also care about actionability and how we are going forward. What is our plan? Now, from this, you can take all of whatever story you want to tell to your regulator. And by, by, I don't mean story in the wrong way. Don't get me wrong. Whatever narrative that you have for your board or for your regulator, let's say you have been making progress and you want to demonstrate the progress to either your board or your regulator or your, your CFO. Balbix can help you generate those slides. And so these are all widgets that have been screenshots from different parts of Balbix, but what I'm trying to show you over here is an actual sample board level text slide. So for example, here I'm trying to say, my risk levels are elevated, but I'm also giving you a snapshot on the ROI of the security program. Right? The post mitigation risk versus the breach impact or other the inherent risk is the value that the program is delivering. And you can look at it both from a money terms as well as from a likelihood terms. And you can sh showcase that, you know, I have uh, my program, uh, we have reduced risk by $26 million. And this is the plan for, for the future. You can, you can show screenshots like this where you're comparing different business units against each other, and you can highlight whatever you want to highlight. These are all insights that you're getting by looking at these charts, and obviously every business is different. Now, if you, for example, have a special focus area, like for example, you might be saying, well, we are increasing the degree of automation that will help us get more mature on the NIST uh, framework, then this is how you can tell the story. And for a NIST maturity re report, you can talk about, you know, what my next best steps are because Senior executives, board members, regulators, they want two things. They want traceability, 
what some people call them transparency, being able to go and look at the evidence that supports what it is. And then the second thing they want to look at is actionability. Right? If something is not actionable, you don't want to take it to your board member, your seniors, your CFO, your CEO, and the CEO, CFO, board member also doesn't want to really see it. So how does how do we give them both of those things, traceability and actionability? And that's what's the unique capability that Balbix has. Uh, progress against uh, NIST framework and so on and so forth. Now, one thing that you know a lot of people say is, hey, this must be really, really complicated to get, get started with. And all I can say is this, that if one of you raises your hand today, the first question you'll say, well, why do I really need Balbix? And I will say, right now what you have is a stethoscope, most likely. Why would you want to have a CD scan? Because Balbix is very similar to giving you a CD scan, not just a one-time CD scan, but a continuous CD scan. And hopefully that can help you do your job better. The second thing you'll ask is, is how long would I take to get that CD scan? And the answer is, well, it's right here, right? It takes about a few, a couple of meetings to plan and understand your pain points. We like to do a lot of homework trying to understand exactly what your pain point is. And then once we have, once we have a good understanding, the actual implementation takes less than a few hours. And then the Balbix brain will learn three to five days, maximum seven days for very large enterprises. And then you will see a CD scan. And then you will tune it, tweak it. You will give us more information. You'll add some more tools. And then you'll have, hopefully in a couple of weeks, you will have your final review. And then you will want to proceed to full deployment. This is the story over and over again. Well, that was my presentation. And uh, I'm uh, happy to take any questions.